welcome to this September 26th edition of Off The Map Live. I am your host, Ben Licata. This is a very tight shot on my face. I look really old in these lights, don't I? Welcome to the show. Uh, tonight we've got Josh Ford and Jessica Brennan on the show. Um, should be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Um, if you notice some noise in the studio, that's just because we have a lot of visiting guests and they're being loud, but that's just what happens. Uh, when you broadcast from a tattoo shop. Uh, this show is brought to you by the Paradise Tattoo Gathering. The schedule is done. It is up. Registration is open. There's seminars, workshops, more stuff than you saw the last time you checked the website. Check out ParadiseTattooGathering.com. It will be coming up very soon. Ah, ah room. I've got some room to breathe in this shot. Oh, much better. We're also brought to you by Reinventing the Tattoo, now available in digital form at reinventingthetattoo.com. The book is out of print, but you don't want it anymore anyway, because the digital version is so much better. It's updated regularly, has guest chapters, videos, and is uh, way easier to carry around with you. Um, one of our fine sponsors is Dax McClellan and his Realistic Portrait System. Check him out at tattooingportraits.com. Voluta Tattoo and their digital release forms. They're not 10 pages like you might have heard. Uh, they're easy to use. They make it way better for your clients. And uh, you don't have to have paper everywhere. Save some trees. Fuck the haters. And uh, Disappearing Inc., our newest partners in uh, the Majestic Theater here where we are. Uh, if you need to get a tattoo lightened or removed before you get your cover up or uh, you want to um, start anew, Check out our partners at Disappearing Inc. They are right next door here at 84 Cottage Street. And uh, last but not least, we are brought to you by Off The Map Tattoo, where we are right now. Uh, we are at the brand new Majestic Theater here in beautiful East Hampton, Massachusetts. Come see us. The place is uh, enormous. We do events. Uh, we had an amazing drink and draw here last night with Tony Moore and Jeff Gogway right here in-house. We had some uh, locals join us. Uh, if you missed it, I'm sorry, stay tuned to our website and you won't miss the next one. Make sure you subscribe to our Instagram and our YouTube channel. Um, speaking of our YouTube channel, if you've missed the show, um, we've got over three years of episodes available on our YouTube channel and also available on the iTunes store as both a video and a audio podcast. Um, if you do like our podcast, please subscribe and rate it. Um, no one's going to find it if we don't get those ratings up. Appreciate your help. Uh, last episode was Jörg uh, Hutmann. Uh, he was great. Uh, if you missed it, it's available, like I said, YouTube, iTunes. Uh, this episode, Josh Ford and Jessica Brennan. So please stay tuned for that and the network news coming to you very soon. See you in just a few minutes. At whatever stage you may be in your tattoo career, apprentice, experienced street shop tattooer, or fully custom artist, it's hard not to feel a little competitive in today's tattoo industry, with so many amazing artists working in all styles in virtually every corner of the world. But you can benefit right now by learning from the experience of the tattoo professionals who have dedicated themselves to education in this industry. I'm Guy Aitchison, and I've been teaching in the tattoo field for much of my 27 years in the trade, with most of my educational efforts being focused within my Reinventing the Tattoo platform, which has been an industry standard in education for nearly two decades. Reinventing was originally conceived as a series of seminars that I held at tattoo conventions, and its curriculum has been filled out and fine-tuned according to the needs of the artists attending these classes. It's now a massive standalone educational package which can be viewed on any kind of device in order to bring the answers you need right to your fingertips. The Reinventing the Tattoo curriculum is centered around a group of fundamental artistic principles and composition, including flow and fit on the body, contrast, positive-negative relationships, color theory, depth, and other concepts, which are framed in a way that is meant to be as useful as possible to working tattoo artists. The material then covers uses of reference imagery and digital tools in your design process, along with a review of alternate art forms such as oils and watercolors and how they can help refine your skills as a tattoo artist. The technical sections are as comprehensive as possible, covering everything from machines and other basic equipment to stenciling and working on various challenging parts of the body. Not only am I sharing everything useful that I know about these subjects, but I'm also enlisting the help of various top-name professionals, such as Russ Abbott, Nick Baxter, Megan Jean Morris, Phil Garcia, Halo Jankowski, and Don McDonald to share their own experience on these topics. You may have already read the book version of Reinventing the Tattoo. However, the new electronic edition has been seriously updated and expanded beyond the scope of the old book, 
including not only new chapters by myself and our guest writers, but also introducing a massive section on cover-up tattooing, including chapters on lasers and scar cover-ups, plus loads of new video footage to further illustrate the book's topics. Subscribers can look forward to seeing new material added regularly, along with further updates to existing content as the Reinventing Curriculum continues to expand and evolve. I'd like to invite you to drop by ReinventingTheTattoo.com to read more about what we have to offer in the Reinventing the Tattoo educational package. It's the biggest and most detailed teaching effort I've ever been involved with, and I'm completely confident that no matter where you stand in your tattoo career, it can help you to take your work to the next level. Um, we're back with Jeff Goway and see you. Jessica Brennan. Hey, how are you? What's up, buddy? Can you hey. hear? You can hear. Okay? I'm good. I can hear. Her. Yeah, you feel like you're far away. I mean, you, you sound like you're far away. She is. She's all the way down south. How are things going? I'm in Virginia. Yeah. It's great. It's it's warm. <laughs> is it humid? Uh, it's getting a little better, but it was really disgusting for a while. It's not the humid. day that I moved, it was 111 degrees. That's too much. No, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like the temperature? Do, but you like, do you like where you're working? Do you like what's going on? I fucking love it. It's, it's um, so... Watch the can language, I not swear? You can, watch the language. You can say whatever Sorry. Saying. You can say whatever the fuck you want to. Hey, you watch the fucking language, because you cannot <laughs> fucking cuss here. You can, you can I'm say, sorry. You can say whatever you want. It's the internet. It doesn't matter. I freaking a... love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's called darn No, it's awesome. Um, I'm having a really awesome time at the shop with all the amazing people I get to work with. All right. So the do, ladies especially. Do me a favor and tell everybody what shop and who these amazing people are. Um, I'm working at Unkindness Art in Richmond, Virginia. I'm working with Teresa Sharp, Aaron Chance, William Voles, Gary Morrill, uh, Doom Kitten, uh, which is Jarrett Carabin, I want to say his last name. I never say it right. I never do. Um, and just William go, just Van. Just stick with the stage name. Yeah, just, just internet. Right? Names, I know. Like Instagram. Handles. Doom Kitten yeah. is Doom is what we call him anyway, so <laughs> we just call him Doom. So why did you make a move down down south? Um, hey, well, personal. Why? <laughs> there's a you know there's there's some personal reasons, um, but uh, I mean when somebody like Teresa Sharp says, "Hey, do you want to work with me?" Um, you're kind of like, yeah, I mean, I would want to work with Jeff, too. This guy? <laughs> oh. Hey, yeah, we're all here. Yeah, we're all kind together. Of, we're all here. He's, <laughs> he's my hero, and he knows that, but so is Teresa. 
Um, they're both, uh, you know, see, I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, no, I, I just, you. I think it's like, great. I think it's great that you're there. I think that, uh, I think it's a good place for you to be. And I think that you're going to shine like a star. Oh, yeah. you're, you're so sweet. I hope so. Like a diamond. <laughs> diamond star, star made out of diamonds. Yeah. Can you see my work? Woo woo. You're looking at it right now. <coughs> well, hey, not um, my work. I meant Jeff's work. Oh, hey. yeah. Put that away. He's okay. <laughs> now I just see me. Now what do you see? Um, some flowers that I did. <laughs> All right, let's make this an interview. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I'm sorry. I have a really ner a bad nervous giggle. Oh, that's cool. I, <laughs> I, it's I like it. It's endearing. Um, tell me how I'm you got always nervous. <clears throat> tell me how you got started in tattooing and why. Started with tattooing. So I went to art school for uh, painting and illustration, and I uh, as a graduate um, of the Rhode Island School of Design, I went into waitressing. <laughs> and I did that for a few years while I was trying to paint. Um, I wanted to be a painter. And, you know, the whole dream is to move to New York and, and do that for a living. But it's kind of, unless you're independently wealthy or have some kind of trust fund, it's pretty impossible to do that. Uh, you know, so I waitressed in, in Providence, Rhode Island for a while and trying to paint and it just got a little, uh, you know, it got sidetracked where I, I wasn't painting and I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. And I was getting really annoyed with the, uh, the restaurant business. So I quit and I kind of just, didn't know what to do at the time. I wanted to do something with my degree. Um, and I, I always loved tattoos. I loved the, you know, the aesthetic and, and I never really, I only had a couple little ones, but, uh, I had a, a friend of an ex boyfriend of mine who owned a shop in Rhode Island and um, I kind of just sent him a message. I was like, hey, uh, what do you think about me maybe doing this? And he was like, wow, I think you'd be great. Uh, just come by the shop and, um, you know, bring some stuff with you, like portfolio wise. And of course, I didn't really have anything like since college and like just a few paintings that I had sold. So I brought that stuff by and they, I mean, I don't know, they were probably just looking for a desk girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they hired me and I started my apprenticeship and that's kind of how it all got started. Um, would you say, that so you it was a, actually, would you say that you had a traditional apprenticeship and what was your apprenticeship like? Um, I don't, I think it was, it, it was pretty quick <laughs> and, um, I wish I actually had like a little bit more uh, I wish I was taught a little bit more. I wish it was a little bit more, um, I don't know. I just felt I, the, where, where I started, I, I was kind of just, um, the front desk girl slash, uh, gopher, um, you know, doing some, as they would say, like busy bitch work. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you. what? I you didn't say that. That was you doing that? Yeah, the all the all the nonsense work I had to do. I made needles a lot. What, are you, doing, what are you doing? What are you doing now? What do you mean? What am I doing now? I mean, what do you do now? Each day, what do you do? Um, I I fucking make amazing things. Excuse me, I can't stop. <laughs> You're completely allowed to swear. I was totally kidding. Yeah, Jeff oh, okay. was just being sensitive. You know, it's oh. ears. <laughs> yeah. No, Don't you do that, because you know how I am. Were bleeding. <laughs> you can swear as much as you want to. Yeah. Well, don't say that, because my mom might be watching. 
Well, that's up to you. She you gets know, mad I'm... at me. Oh, okay. Well, you can blame it on me. I'm, a, I'm easy. I can, I can be a scapegoat. Yeah. So do you do yeah, many I know, well, I'm, the conversations I have with you normally are full of them, so. <laughs> mm. It's true. What's, it, what's it? it like working with <laughs> Teresa? What's it like working there with Aaron, Teresa, those people? Do you feel like it's elevated you? Do you feel like it's brought you up? Uh, or are you in the right place? I work, yeah, I work a lot harder. Um, I'm up a lot later uh, prepping stuff and seeing the way that they really put extra time and extra care into all the prep work into their tattoos has made me like, it's just pushed me a lot more. Um, I do a lot of like, I'll stencil and I'll freehand and I'll do a lot of that stuff. But now I do a little bit more uh, drawing to prep at night and then um, let, like less freehand stuff during the day so I can get more tattooing in because people are paying a lot of money. So, you know, we have to give them as much as they possibly can. And uh, they, if they can take it, then we just keep going. And, and watching them just tattoo for like 10, 12 hours, it, it really pushes me to do that as well. Um, so that's what definitely... It, what are you bringing to them? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm still totally shocked that they wanted me. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. They seem to think that we can all learn from each other. So I don't, I don't know what they see in me. Um, <laughs> But it's got to be something. Um, okay, let me... I don't really... I'll rephrase it. <laughs> this is great. What? <laughs> You're... Hey. Be nice. <laughs> I'm being nice. So, what, would, what do you want to bring to them? Um, what, what do you want to bring well, to I the feel... studio that you're out? What do you want to... What effect... Bye, Ben. <laughs> hey, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Um, I'm still kind of soul searching and and figuring out myself as an artist. So um, I'm learning a lot about myself and what I do bring to the shop. Um, I I think we all work similarly. Um, Teresa and I have a, a similar way of going about putting together pieces and and the way we, um, I would say, just from beginning to end. It's it, we we actually both learn from you a lot, and uh, we we kind of take things that you do and uh, do it that way as well. But I'm learning from her more to prep stuff, but then I learned from you the freehand stuff. So I kind of put them all together and figure out my own thing, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe maybe that will maybe not give it something to Teresa, but maybe to the other people at the shop, um, you know, that are, are, are stuck a little bit more on really rendered drawings beforehand and not being more free with like the design at the time, you know, just going at it and, and giving it that freedom and that energy, which I, I really like about freehanding things. Um, so I don't know. I think it's a good balance. I don't know if I bring that or if I learn from them. I, I think it's, it's a pretty, pretty equal, uh, you know, dynamic, like learning from each other. I, I guess that's because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they like me. <laughs> oh, come on. It's obvious why they like you. You're talented and you're fun to be around. I mean, come on. I like that fun. <laughs> so if someone wants to, if someone wants to get in touch with you make, to make an appointment or uh, whatnot, what's the best way? Um, well, my personal email is always flooded. So um, I'm very, very bad 
at trying to sort through all of that stuff. So uh, you can email the shop at, um, if you're looking for me directly, it's uh, Ray Unkindness. That's my middle name. That's what they call me at the shop. That's my my given name is just Ray, R-A-E. So it's Ray Unkindness. Is it Ray Unkindness at gmail.com? <laughs> um, or you can just go to the e- or the uh, the website, and there's um, a list of all the artists and their contact information, and a general uh, filling out of you know like a little description of what you want. And sometimes uh, Brandon, our manager, he's great. He'll just kind of direct people in the right direction as to um, which artists they should choose based on what they want or their style. And um, I actually, I get a lot of people that, you know, if Teresa obviously is, is she's super booked up and uh, Aaron as well. So I get a lot of uh, folks that want to do floral stuff or, or anything similar to Teresa or Aaron's style. Um, they kind of go to me because I'm a little more available now that I'm down here and I'm new, so I have a lot more time than them. <laughs> uh, but those are the two best ways. I've noticed I that you guys have done a lot of streaming on Twitch. Um, how's that experience been for you? It's it's interesting. I, it took a little bit to get used to uh, when I first got there because we have cameras set around the shop um, and, and at any given time somebody will say something and they're talking to the Twitch stream <laughs> and it's like the most random thing because they're they're sitting there reading the feed and not all of us are reading it so we're, we're just like where, where did that come from you know it, it took a little while to get used to but I think it's a really uh, helpful tool because they can watch every day and see what's going on. They can see certain processes. Um, there was one day, I think, uh, last week that Teresa did from beginning to end, like literally from the very beginning of a sketch to uh, lining it out, stenciling it, and then actually doing, starting the tattoo. So. It's it's awesome for people to see like realistically how things get done in a shop, not like TV, <laughs> um, which is funny because we have two people that have been on on shows there, but this is like real, so they can see how long it takes, all the all the preparation, all of the the painstaking work that goes into prepping and and starting a tattoo and even finishing a tattoo, which is a really fun day when people get to see that on Twitch, they get to see like a finished tattoo. And of course they're always phenomenal and it's, it's always a fun day cause they're like, yeah, finished tattoo. <laughs> Especially when they're, you know, giant leg sleeves or back pieces or full torso pieces. And I mean, Jeff, you know, a good, that's a good day when you finish something that's that big. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I have a bell at my shop now. I got a Tibetan bell <laughs> that I let people ring. Some people are like, ding, ding, like, and then they cry, and then others are like, <laughs> ding, 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 and then they cry. I think but, I, was, I, was, uh, I was there working one day when, when you finished something, and I heard the bell. Yeah, it's And it was uh, kind of a celebration. It is. It's moving, you know. I mean, it's a big deal when especially on a large scale project. So I think I only had the bell ring like three times last year. <laughs> I think my bell might ring in like, what, 10 years or so? I'm hoping <laughs> before I'm 40. Hey, that's but a little we'll personal. See. <laughs> I'm 43, lady. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm hoping before I'm like old, almost as old as you. Yeah, I know how it is. Hey, are you going to come to the gallery? I just want to ring my bell. Are you, <laughs> are you coming What's up to that? the gathering? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm working the first um, couple days, and then so Jeff's tattooing come. me. If you're no call, no show. I swear to God, you're. <laughs> so you're tattooing no, her? no, I'll be yeah. there. I haven't booked my room yet, but um, I will be there. <laughs> you should probably do that because there aren't that many. 
So. I know. Um, I think uh, I'm going to be splitting some with uh, Kelsey. She just I know left. she's over there. She, she just what? left. I think she's watching oh, from man. home. Oh, man. Yeah. Aw. She told me she was welcome to come on screen, but she was scared. <laughs> yeah, she was, too, she was too terrified. So, so she ran I, away. I'm, I'm terrified to be on this right now, but... I think she's doing great. Here we are. Yeah, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> I can't tell that you're terrified at all. I just want no. to say I'm, I'm going to head out. That's cool. We're, uh, we're, we got to wrap up Almost anyway. We got to go to commercial. So you... Jessica. Okay. Well, I'll see you think, soon, Jeff. I'm, I'm super um, proud of you. What, a couple weeks. I think weeks? you're awesome. I think you're amazing. I think talent. you're awesome. I think you're an awesome tattooer. I'm honored to tattoo you. I'm super glad that I was here to be a part of this and. I know it was like such a pleasant surprise. Thank you so much. It made me feel a little more at ease. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, hey, thank you for, for, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you at Paradise. Thank you, guys. I'm sure he will, too. I'll see you soon in a couple weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So, awesome. Thank you again. See you soon. Bye. Bye. All right. We'll be right back with Josh Ford uh, after these commercials. See ya. What is a webinar? It's your chance to up your game and improve yourself with new techniques in art, in business, and tattooing. Webinars are streaming professional development seminars taught by the masters of their craft that you can watch in the comfort of your home, your studio, or even on the go on your mobile device. If you have a stable internet connection, you can stream a webinar. Here at Tattoo Now, we continually produce high quality video presentations from top artists and business people. Our catalog includes hours of education from greats like Guy Aitchison, Bob Tyrell, DJ Betts, Jeff Gogway, Russ Abbott, James Kern, Tommy Helm, Ian McCown, Kelly Doty, Remmer Oriana, and more all the time. These professional artists share their years of experience to accelerate your path and help you become more successful. Fill up on high octane brain fuel now with the Tattoo Now webinar. Do you want to bring your career to the next level? then webinars from Tattoo Now can help you do that. Now we've got uh, Josh Ford on the line. Josh, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I am doing wonderful. What's, uh, what's new in your world? What's new in my world? Um, I don't know, man. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of new stuff, I guess. Um, you know, I've got, you know, tattooing machine stuff's going on, and, and uh, you know, I've, I've been coaching some MMA guys for a long time, but... Uh, been moving into life coaching and uh, starting to really uh, feel like it's my time to start sharing some information and um, whether that's with other tattooers or you know other people in life, whatever. I'm, I'm just uh, I feel like I'm starting to make a, a little bit more of a shift from being a, a primarily a taker and more to like a giver. <laughs> that's that's great. Do you think that's just come with age and maturity, or uh, is there something that you, that has changed in your life to make you take that path? Uh, age and maturity, for sure, but I think uh, just just sort of recognizing um, kind of where I've come to in life and, and what I've sort of always been drawn to, and uh, you know, the last five years or so, you know, I, you know, once I hit, I started getting close to, you know, 20 years of tattooing, and now I've, I just am getting ready to be at 21 years, but I, I kind of knew I always wanted some other stuff going on besides just tattooing, and uh between coaching and teaching martial arts, and then I got into nutrition stuff, and then I got into strength and performance stuff, uh, and then just a lot of the, the experiences that I've been through in my life and what I've learned from, it all started slowly coming together to where I, I felt like I kind of had this whole sort of package of, of things I could share with other people to, to, to help live happier and healthier lives. 
So that's kind of been a big, um, been driving, a big driving force for me uh, in the last year or so, and I'm starting to really put it into action. And you know, having life coaching clients and 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 actively um, trying to share some of my experiences to see if other people can can take from it and and help with with their life and their experiences. It's, it's been. Um, it's been pretty fulfilling to start to share in that way and, and doing it more f from the perspective of, um, like I said, just trying to share, not really like stand on top of a, a box and look down and say like, I have all this information so you'll listen to me. It's, it's more about uh, trying to show my humanity and just share that with other people. Uh, do, you, do you find that ties into tattooing at all, um, that outlook? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, we, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. We always joke that, you know, tattooers are like bartenders. You know, you get people sitting in your chair for hours. And, yeah, especially when you have clients that you're doing big pieces on, you, you get to know them and, and you start to talk about life. And, uh, I mean, I feel like tattooing to some extent has sort of helped prepare me for, um, for this next stage in life because I've gotten to where I can sit down and I can talk to people and I can ask you know, questions and, and get to know people past sort of the surface bullshit, you know, and um, get into some deeper discussions. And um, so, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, helped it in that, in that way. So can you tell me how you, like, some of the changes that you've seen since like the mid to late 90s and now? With it, tattooing? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely changed a lot, you know, it's, I mean, for one, information that's out there and, and the rate that some of these young tattooers are learning and expanding is unbelievable. And even, you know, myself, I mean, I feel like I, I'm actually learning more about tattooing now these days than I probably have since the beginning. But, you know, again, that's, I think part of that's like keeping my ego in check and not thinking that I know everything and, and really trying to be a student when I see, I mean, I don't care. Even if somebody has been tattooing for two years, if I sit down and watch them do a good tattoo, I'm going to, I'm going to ask them what they're doing, you know? And, and I think that's gotten a little more progressive these days. You see it more. Um, I think, you know, the guys that are in the older generation of tattooing are starting to open up more to the young guys. It's not so much of this, you know, I, I've been tattooing longer, so I automatically am above and greater than you, um, which is sort of the feeling it was like when I started tattooing. Um, you know, and of course, with, with the general public, it's a little more uh, accepted. I remember, I, I mean, you can't really see it right now, but my chin's tattooed. And, uh, you know, my chin's been tattooed for almost 20 years. And I remember, you know, when I was younger, and I'm sure it was a mix of you know, tattoos not being as accepted as well as being a little younger and a little more of a knucklehead. But, I mean, I would literally have women cross the street to not have to walk by me. And now I have grandmothers walking up telling me how beautiful my chin and my neck tattoos are. So it's interesting um, that it's not so much of a, a, an outcast thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. So you're not only a tattooer, but you're a, you're a machine builder. Um, can you tell me why you're so passionate about coil machines? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, coil, I mean, it's just obviously it's what I learned on. And so I, I you know, once I started getting into machines and, and sort of the evolution that brought me into building my own machines, um, you know, it was before rotaries were really around. So I just threw myself into to coil machines. And, and what brought me into machine building really was just wanting to understand my equipment more. And the guy that I learned to tattoo from, while he was, you know, very good at pushing me artistically, he didn't know really anything about machines. And so I had to start searching guys out to, uh, to learn about machines. And um, a couple guys that really helped me out, especially in the early days, was Adam Perry and, and Joey DeZormo. And both of those guys were very open with me, but I would go in and I would I would put in some work in their in their machine shops, and really all I was trying to do was learn how to tune my machines, so I didn't have to worry about it while I was sitting down to tattoo. And uh, you know, I guess like with anything else, the more I practiced at it, the better I got. And and then I started tuning the machines of the other guys in the shop, and then other guys in town started bringing me their machines, and then other guys from other states started sending me their machines, and, and I got to the point where I, I felt like enough people wanted machines to run the way I was setting them up that I might as well 
work with my own geometry and my own ideas instead of having to constantly work with somebody else's. And uh, so I, I got with that, and you know, I I stuck pretty pretty strictly to the coil for a long time, and I really just in the last couple months have have started doing some rotaries. Uh, and part of that is just, uh, again, I think being a little more humble as a coil machine builder and letting go of some of the pride of just, you know, I build coil machines, so that's all there is. And these other rotaries, it's just a, you know, fly by night thing, it'll go away. But it's not. And to be honest with you, I, I've been using them more now that I make them. And I, I just make a direct drive, a nice simple one. And they have their use. I, I don't, for me, it's not a complete switch over you know it's like everything else you have a you know you have a, a paintbrush for specific paints and specific purposes and it's just another tool man and if it makes people's if it makes people's jobs and their ability to create a beautiful tattoo easier or or better for them i'm not going to knock it and, and you know especially i'm not going to talk trash about it just because i was a coil guy you know but uh, i still you know primarily coils but you know the rotary is just a, a a different adventure and a different experience so what are you using? Uh, what are you using rotaries for these days? Uh, when you do dabble with a rotary, um, what, what's what's the main use for you? Um, I don't use them for lining at all. I don't, I've I've tried them for lining just to to give it the fair shake. But to be honest with you, for me, the feedback that I get from lining with a coil machine, I can't replace with a with a, a rotary, and uh, I just I can't switch it out. I just really like the feeling of the connection that I get through a, a coil machine while I'm lighting. Um, but I'll use it for, uh, you know, I've been playing around with it for, for shaders and, and some, I, I use it to mess around with some of the, the cartridge setups. You know, cartridge is a little newer and, and uh, especially for traveling, it makes it a little easier. And I really like the direct drives with the cartridge setup because the, the cartridge system already has a little bit of a give with the tips. So then when you put that on to, uh, direct drive, I feel like I can work at the same pace I can with a coil machine, whereas putting a, like the, the cartridges on some of the more like slide drives or the adjustable rotaries that have a give, it's like you end up having too much give down the chain and so it really slows up the way that I tattoo and I like to tattoo pretty efficient. So um, yeah, you know, I really, like I said, I really like the, 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 slot, the direct drives for the cartridges, but also use it when I'm doing, you know, some uh, when I'm doing some Japanese work, doing some big background. I like it for some of the bigger mags. Um, just having that good, solid, steady hit. I feel like I can work pretty efficient with it. So, you know, it's you get all more of a consistent, it's just, <coughs> get consistent, consistent shading, consistent saturation that way. You know, right, right? with with a, a rotary. Yeah, with, with some of the bigger things for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, get that direct hit. If someone's looking for one of your machines, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, they can email me, or I have a website, just Josh Ford Machines. Pretty simple, joshfordmachines.com. Um, I have a, I have a section up there where I'll put uh, machines that are pre-built, but I, I don't really. These days, I haven't been able to put much inventory on there because uh, keeping up with orders or getting machines ready for conventions, I don't have a lot of extra machines, so it's mostly like custom order stuff. So. The website has a custom order section, so people can, you know, pick what frame they like, what color they want. It's got a bunch of drop-down menus, so they can basically customize it however they want and, and, and don't have to mess around with a bunch of emails back and forth with me if they don't want to. Or they can just email me at, you know, joshfordmachines at gmail.com, and we can discuss what, you know, a, a lot of times I get younger tattooers that are still trying to figure machines out, and they want to know, you know, what my opinion is, they'll, so they'll send me photos of their work, and I kind of look at what they do, and, and I'll suggest different setups from there. You know, I don't, uh, I've got a pretty wide range of how I can tune machines, so um, it's nice being able to try to uh, get the machine for the right purpose in their hands, even if they don't know exactly what they're looking for. It's like a fun puzzle to figure out. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of figuring that puzzle out myself right now. <laughs> it's, been, it's been challenging, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so where are you located right now? I'm in Maryland. I, uh, I work at a shop in Annapolis called Lucky Bird. And uh, I moved out here a couple years ago from Denver. My wife got transferred to D.C. for work. She's got a, she's got a uh, job where she has to deal with politics and, and uh, lawmakers and all that good, fun stuff that I don't want anything to do with. Yeah, so, fuck that. Uh, you know, yeah. So we <laughs> came out for her job. And I, uh, 
It was interesting coming out because it was the it was the first time I'd actually had to look for a job, uh, probably since I almost started tattooing. Because once I left the shop that I apprenticed at, from that point on, it was pretty much getting invited to work other places or having my own shop. And so coming out to an area where I didn't really know anybody at all and and having to actually you know apply for a job was, was uh, it was a humbling experience for sure, especially after 18 years of tattooing and. You know, all of a sudden I'm getting these butterflies in my stomach and wondering if people are going to like my portfolio enough to, to let me work at their shop. But it, uh, it worked out. I started at another shop when I came out here and, and um, you know, I, I had sort of a specific scenario in mind because of the machines. I have limited time for tattooing, so uh, I needed a shop that was willing to work with, with that and wasn't looking to me to be a, a full-time tattooer at the first shop agreed to it but once I started working there it wasn't really working out so I left and now I've been at, at Lucky Bird for a couple of years and it's it's pretty amazing I think I'm the the oldest tattooer there I mean at least tattoo time wise and uh, so it's fun I kind of get to be like the big brother of the shop and uh, the owner Perry is great and there's a, a great crew of like young guys that we have there and um, yeah, it's fun. It's it's been real enjoyable. I've actually probably been enjoying tattooing more these last two years. Uh, I feel like I've been progressing more than I probably have in the last fifteen. So it's it's been cool. Yeah, that's it. Sounds like you're in a pretty good yeah. place. Do you um do you travel? Do you travel to many conventions? I know you. I mean, I've seen you at a few. Um, how how often do you travel? Yeah, I've been traveling a lot, especially the last couple of years. You know, I told my wife when we moved from Denver, because I was leaving 18 years of clientele behind, I said, look, I'm not, I'm not gonna kill myself trying to build up a, a, a clientele that matches what I had, and I've got the machine, so you know, I kinda just decided I was gonna go back to a little bit more full bore with the machines like I had been a few years before. And so with getting into that, you know, you kinda have to be out in the conventions and letting people see your product and, and you know, put a, a face to the name, and so I've been traveling a lot in the last, Especially the last, uh, where were we at? Getting into October. I mean, the last like five months, I've been on the road almost as much as I've been home. So it's been a little, it's been a little hectic, but it, you know, fun nonetheless. Being able to kind of get back out and get on the circuit a little more and see uh, some of the changes and some of the younger tattooers that are starting to break through and do some pretty amazing tattoos. Where's uh, where are some of the places you're going to be traveling to next? Uh, I'll be in Richmond this weekend for the convention. And then uh, uh, last week I was actually up at a at a smaller show just outside of Calgary, and that was a it was fun. This Lethbridge show, I did a did a machine seminar there and some tattoos. And then uh, let's see, I'll be in Calgary next month, and then the week after that I'll be at the Bay Area convention. And uh, that might be it for the year. I, I I'm talking about possibly going down to another show in the Bahamas in November, but that's kind of up in the air right now. I, I don't really know if I'm wanting to put more travel on my plate. I'm ready to just kind of be home and hang out with my wife and family and get some downtime. Yeah, I mean it's kind of hard to turn down the Bahamas, but I can understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can understand being away. Um, well, hey man, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, would you come back yeah, and talk to me? Come back and talk to me again sometime. Absolutely, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been really great. And so, was your website again? JoshFordMachines.com. All right, sweet. So, anyone that's looking for your machines, what about uh, your other stuff? Where can people find your uh, like coaching stuff? Uh, you know, I really don't. I, I haven't like. I don't really push that. I kind of let it just go organically, to be honest oh, with you. So, I mean, great. people could contact me if they, if they, I mean, if they want to just contact me through my, my regular email. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the, the life coaching stuff, I sort of just take it as it comes. I'm not, I'm not trying to force it or create, like, a standalone business. And it's just the same thing with the, the MMA coaching and strength training. Most of the strength training stuff I do with uh, the fighters that I coach so I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to sit in a gym and, and teach people how to work out all day long, you know. So it's kind of a, you know, again, it's it's just like the, yeah. it's like I said with the tattoo shop, I sort of have this whole organic flow that I worked very hard to, to build so that I have a, a comfortable variety and it allows me to not really get burnt out in one direction. Sounds really good, man. Oh, uh, one more. Yeah. One more, one more travel. Uh, I'm actually going to be up visiting you guys uh, end of November. So Wonderful. I'll be up there tattooing and some machine stuff, so. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that.
Yeah, awesome. Cool, man. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you in November, and uh, we'll get you back on the show sometime, too. I really appreciate you joining us this time. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Take it easy. All right. Thanks, you too. That was Josh Ford. What do you think? Pretty cool dude, huh? Um, we got the network news coming up with Josh Tahosa in just a couple minutes, so stick around for that, and uh, we'll see you after these commercials. Tattoo artists are power creators, not power administrators. Save time, money, and trees with Tattoo Release Forms app. Your client will photo his ID, enter personal information, information about the tattoo, health information, initial legal clauses, and sign his name. When the client is finished, you can make session notes and choose inks and needles from the most popular brands and configurations. Preview the form, sign it, and hit upload. The form lands on a secure cloud in seconds as a printable PDF. If you're at a convention or without Wi-Fi, TRF will automatically upload the forms next time you're online. Return clients can simply search for themselves, check to make sure all the information is correct, and sign again. Done in seconds. Download Tattoo Release Forms app from the Apple App Store for free and enjoy 25 free forms. Also available in the UK, Canada, and Australia. This is Tattoo Now Network News. Hey, what's up? Hi, everyone. It's September 26th. We've got some news for you. Uh, I'm Josh, and this is Joe King. I'm back. He's going to co-anchor, and this is going to be amazing. And we're going to get all sorts of information about things that you really care about. Um, so yeah, like I said, September 26th, it's Johnny Appleseed Day. So, Joe, happy Johnny Appleseed Day. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, please tell me everything you know about Johnny Appleseed. Little known fact, I actually went to high school with Johnny Appleseed. Um, he was a dick. Oh, well, so, there you have it. But, um, you know, happy, enjoy some apples. happy day. Enjoy some apples today. Drink some cider. Drink some apple juice. And uh, be, be safe. Um, also, it is Linda Hamilton's birthday. Perfect. Linda Hamilton's birthday. Uh, or as we like to call her, Sarah Connor. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the Terminator series, which is one of my favorites. And uh, it's great. It's about resistance fighting. Um, she, has, she has life-saving loins. Yeah, it's about saving the human race. And Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are going to go at it tonight in the first debate. Um, hopefully, Sarah Connor can protect us from that. Hopefully, if we're, if we're lucky. If it's not too late. It's we don't know. It could be judgment night. Yeah. I don't know. But um, let's talk about tattoo stuff. I think that's why everybody's here. All right. Cool. Lead the way. Um, so, first of all, your handsome host, Ben Licata. Uh, is now accepting walk-ins. So swing on by Alpha Map Tattoo here in East Hampton, Massachusetts, and let him make you more beautiful than you already are. I uh, heard he has superpowers. Yeah, actually. and here's a really fun fact about that. I think you might have had a hand in teaching him how to tattoo. Um, it, was, it was part of a hand. I just used like these two fingers um, back here because uh, I was busy with these, but they were part of a hand. I, I had a part of a hand. Good. So yeah, come on in, get tattooed by Ben. <laughs> Call the shop, set up appointments. Him, go to his website, benlicata.com. Um, also, uh, Alex Shepalenko has been added to the Paradise Tattoo Gathering. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, go to the website, paradisetattoogathering.com. And uh, you can score yourself an appointment and you can check out all the other artists attending. Uh, what, el what else could they find on this website? All the information about Paradise, including seminars, artists, schedules, events, schedules, where to stay. The ParadiseTattooGathering.com is the one-stop shop for all information. Paradise Tattoo Gathering. Perfect. Great. Um, Lucky Bamboo Tattoo. Okay. Leighton, Utah. Have you ever been to Utah? I have not. I've not been to Utah either. I uh, have. How did you like it, Ben? Have you been? You like Utah? Uh, uh, it was great. Utah yeah, is great. That was phenomenal. It is amazing. They have salt in their lakes. It's wonderful. And they have jazz on their basketball courts. I am a big fan of salt. 
Yeah. I don't. I, um, but anyway, uh, Lucky Bam ba- Lucky Bamboo is seeking a full time artist. Uh, go to luckybamboo.tattoo.com and you can get all the information. You can work with Jared Presser and Christina Wolfer. And you can also get your ass a job. So. With some great people. Um, Louisville, Texas, another place I've never been. But I hear great things. Yeah? Yeah. I've never heard anything about this town. Um, I, I'm questioning your authority. I, I, right I, now. I honestly haven't either, I'm sorry. Um, but Texas is cool. And Rebel Muse is hiring. Um, it's a pretty great shop. Go check it out, rebelmusetattoo.com. Um, Joe, do you have anything about Fort Doom news? Um, Fort Doom, uh, the last I heard was that they had stuff. Wait, hang on. I'm sorry. Hang on. Actually, I just got an update on this. Fort Doom actually has all the stuff that you would want, turns out. Um, it looks like it's all available at fortdoom.com. So if you're a person that likes stuff and you were looking for a place that it would be available, fortdoom.com. So there you go. Cool. There you have it. September 26th. The news is over. I want to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Tim St. John behind the board. He's been making this show run so smooth. He always does. He's, uh, he's good at what he does. Thanks, Tim. Um, I want to thank all you viewers for watching. Yeah, you guys are the reason we do the show every single week. Um, check out the Off The Map Instagram and Facebook, and as well as the Tattoo Now Off The Map Facebook, whatever. All of our social media stuff, you know what it is. You're on it every 45 seconds. Uh, make sure you check out our podcast, now available in audio form on iTunes. Uh, it's a lot easier to digest. You can play it in your car now. You don't have to worry about the video getting in your way. You can listen to the show without having to see this ugly face. Um, if you like it, review it, uh, share it with friends, tell everybody. We want to keep the show going and we can't do that unless we get some views and ratings out there. Uh, thanks to all you late night stoners watching us on cable access as well. We really appreciate you. Uh, next show will be one week from today. We will see you then. It'll be October, a new month. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Upcoming shows, we've got David Corden, Chris Jones, Corey Ferguson, Ralph Nonweiler, and more. Uh, if you've got suggestions, email us. Uh, we'll try to get on the people you want to see. Uh, I want to thank our guests, Jessica Brennan, Josh Ford, and my guest co-host. Uh, what's his name? Um, Jeff. Jeff Gogway. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks to Josh Tahosa and Joe King for the news. It was great, guys. We'll see everybody next Monday. Thank you very much. Fuck your beer.